Hi, this is Steve with Knee Family Lights. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. In this video, I'm responding to a comment asking if I could show a little bit more detail on the wiring of the CG1500 differential receiver box that I have. So I'll walk through the box and show the wiring in detail. A link to the original video is in the description below. So this is a part two. If there's more you'd like to see on these builds, let me know in the comments below. Now let's get right into it. All right, here we are looking at the inside of the CG1500 box. I've got power supply one on the top, power supply two on the bottom, and I've got two electronic components. Power supply one feeds this guy here, and power supply two feeds the diff receiver board there. For the AC power cord that's coming in here at the bottom, you can see I've got it zip tied to a little anchor here to kind of hold it in place and give it some strain relief. And the three wires coming off that are the AC ground, the green, the neutral white and the hot black. What you can't see very well, and I will try to show it here, is I have a jumper cable that goes from power supply two up to power supply one on the AC side. So underneath the hot line is another black wire that goes, there's a little spade connector and it runs across the bottom there and it goes to the hot line up here. I did the same thing for the neutral. There's a white wire that is connected to a spade connector that's underneath the white from the pigtail. It goes out and it comes across and it goes into the neutral line also on the power supply one. And then the ground, the green wire here, there's one more. It's also a green wire, it's hard to see. It's got a spade connector and that's underneath the green wire here and goes out and that's the green wire comes around and it goes through the to the ground on the power supply one. So power supply two and power supply one are basically in parallel and that way you can have both power supplies using the same power cord going to your AC extension cords out in your yard. For the DC side, what I have here is the V plus and V minus or V plus and ground. The V plus is connected to the red. This is 12 volts in my case, ground is here. The red V plus goes into my fuse. You, know, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. And then it's connected to this WAGO here. This WAGO then goes back out to a red wire, which is held in place by this little clip just to kind of keep it from moving around. That red wire goes down in order to make the door easily hinge open and close without binding the wires. And that red wire continues and goes straight into the side here. And that's for power supply two for the diff receiver. If I follow the ground wire, it starts down here and it works its way up. And it comes also to this middle point. And then the black here goes out, it goes down and it follows right next to the, the, the 12 volt line also comes up and I've got another one of these little clips to hold all the wires in place again so that way they stay where you want them to be when you're hinging it. And that black goes into the ground here on the diff receiver board. So the ground goes out this way, down and around and there. The 12 volts comes also this way, back around and then in. And very similar, the same thing is happening on power supply one. I'll pull it up. It's kind of crammed in down below. Here's the V plus wire. And then underneath that is the, the ground. So from power supply one, the 12 volts is coming to the fuse. The fuse is coming to this WAGO. The WAGO goes to this red wire, which goes, I've got it tucked looping down. In this case, I have it going up and around. And if you look here, you'll see that it's held in here also by that clip. And this red wire goes all the way across over into the power distro board. So that's power supply one, V plus, and the same thing for the ground. The black wire coming off of the ground side for power supply one is coming this way to this WAGO. And then it's returning back through and following the same path as the, the 12 volt plus line. So it's coming up and around, it's going down and right next to the 12 volt line, it runs this way and goes right into here. So power supply one 
These two wires are kind of pushed down here, so that way I can connect the fuse terminals. And then the power supply two wagos are kind of pushed down there. And that way everything kind of gets routed together. So one set goes down in here, the other set goes up around and over to there. And the last piece is the fan. So this is a 12 volt fan. It's just always on. So what I have here is the wiring for this is just a two wire and it's 12 in ground. And if I move this over, you can see that the fan wire is here. I also have it tucked in to the clip and it's just going right into and tapping off of the power that's going to the diff receiver board. So here it is coming, uh, getting its power from power supply two. Close up view of the AC side. There's a white wire that is hiding there behind on the middle. So you got a black wire, a white wire, and a green wire that's running across. You can see those three wires there. Going up to power supply one. So on the AC side here, we've got the black, white, and green. On the DC side, there is one additional wire that is connecting the DC ground between power supply one and two. And you can see that right here. There's a black wire right here that comes out and that's running across and connecting to the DC ground right, right there. And what that's doing is it's bonding the grounds between the two power supply on the DC side. So that way, if you're using the differential receiver and you're outputting to pixels and then you're power injecting with something over here, then you will have a good continuity on the ground side between both power supplies so you don't get any data corruption. That's the power on the DC side and the AC side. And everything else for the wiring is just as it's seen, the pigtails just go straight out and the uh, Cat5 cable for the serial connection back to the Falcon controller is right here. One more thing I wanted to show on this is that I have a zip tie here holding one side of the fuse block to the top of the power supply. So there's one zip tie here and one zip tie here. And why I did that is so that way when this door opens and closes, I didn't want this fuse block to kind of stick out and interfere with any of the electronics on this side. And that about wraps up this video, an in-depth look at the wiring of the CG1500 differential receiver build. I hope you found this useful. Until next time, we'll see ya.